What's up guys? Welcome to the show. My name is Chepto Ekboyo and today we have Dr. Ezekiel Olaleye who is the founder of Instruments of Africa. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Karibu, karibu sana. In Kenya we say karibu which means welcome. Okay, karibu, karibu to you too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Now you just arrived early morning today. Yes. Hardly got time to experience Kenya. Yes. What what are you looking forward to do in Kenya apart from now doing the press tour and all that? Well, just just looking to connect with a lot of people. Uh I've always uh talked about Kenya. I had a lot of Kenyan friends in college and uh you know, we talk about, you know, the things that makes Kenya unique to Africa, especially Nairobi. And the fact that we've created a product that um, is named after Nairobi is exciting to be here to you know, nice. explore Nairobi. Mm-hmm. So I mean, we're, we're super excited to be here and to connect mm-hmm. with a lot of people. Karibu again. Karibu. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we get into the business of guitar making and all that, we like to know uh, more about your background. Take us through your childhood. Okay. Well, I was born and raised in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Um, When I, around eight, seventeen, eighteen, I moved to the U.S. My my parents we won the visa lottery, mm-hmm. so I've lived in the U.S. for the past twenty years. I uh, went to college, had my first degree, you know, accounting, finance. I uh, had a background in you know a little bit of financial world. Mm-hmm. Then I transitioned into um, a bit of uh, music because I've always played music my life. Mm-hmm. But then growing up in Nigeria, uh my father was a musician, a gospel artist. Yeah. So I spent quite a number of years, you know, going to a lot of uh music events, learning instruments. So I picked up my music skill set from my dad, from folks church, you know, the piano, the drums, the guitar. Nice. So then over the years I used to play with a band in the US, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I lived in Music City, Nashville. Mm-hmm. And I played a lot of um, you know, events Uh, but ultimately, you know, transition, I got my second degree in divinity, mm-hmm. uh, then got my doctorate in education because I just like to teach, you know, and impact people. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You've just said you got a, a master's in divinity. Yeah. Were you looking to be a minister or what prompted that? Well, my, well look, my father was a, a minister mm-hmm. and I did serve uh, in various capacities in churches. So I, I just didn't want to be just a regular person serving. But I wanted to do more by getting an education. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I served in uh, ministry, mm-hmm. and I uh, had some knowledge to impact in people. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was just something that needed to be fulfilled in my life to get education in terms of whatever I'm doing in a line of uh, you know, Christian education. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, will, do you think you will go back to... Ministry, like during retirement or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've I've always been in ministry, and I will forever be in ministry. Okay. Uh, it may not be because when you talk about ministry, people think you're fully, you know, a pastor, pastor in a church. But they, I mean, there is youth ministry, there is uh, leadership ministry. I mean, so wherever I find myself, whatever opportunity brings for me, uh, I'll be serving and you know connecting with people, and 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 serving God is my ultimate. Um, desire okay yeah hey, interesting Thank you. now uh you've just invented the first african electric guitar yeah take us through that journey well uh this was not just something that happened overnight <laughs> um i i started off in 2005 2007 when i was designing my first prototype and there were a lot of challenges Um, when I made my first prototype, it, it, it looked good, but it didn't sound good. Yeah. Um, I didn't understand the concept of the number system when you build electric guitars. Because yeah. every guitar you see around the world, is everything is measured to a precision. Yeah. Uh, so my first prototype, you know, was looking nice. I was excited to, mm-hmm. to make the African guitar. And, and I've always, you know, had the drawing, you know, growing up in Nigeria. You know, it wasn't until when I moved to the U.S. I was able to you know, get the whole thing into fruition. Mm-hmm. But it was really frustrating when I made the first one, it didn't sound good. So I dumped uh-huh. it for about three years. Uh-huh. And it was gathering. How did it look like? The, 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 first? the first one was just your regular brown uh, African mahogany wood. Mm-hmm. Um, I I'd cut out the body. I rented out a machine in Home Depot store. Mm-hmm. And I it was a jigsaw. 
So I cut it out. It took me about three weeks to cut one out. It was more like DIY kind of project. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, but so, but when I when I finished the first one, it was just your regular basic uh, brown satin. I still have it in my archive. Mm-hmm. I cannot sell it. It's, it's my first uh, design. So, but then after the whole uh, completion, I, when I plugged it in, it didn't sound good. I just dumped it and. Uh, I, I went back to the drawing board after so much frustration. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make sure this became a reality. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to a couple of guys um, and they said, you know, this is not going to work. You know, this may not sound good. You can't convert Africa and make it an instrument. But I, I was determined to to make sure that Africa becomes uh, an instrument mm-hmm. that anyone in the world can hold in their hand. Mm-hmm. So if you're a Japanese, you're Chinese, you're Hispanic, or you're an African, you can pick up the instrument and feel a sense of connection to the African continent. Yeah. And and also coupled with the fact that I've always, I've been to a lot of conferences and I just don't see enough African innovation. Yeah. yeah. You know that that led me to want to create something that be that would be a symbol of uh, uh, music, uh, you know, identity for any African who plays uh, either instrument. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've just said sound was the main reason why the first prototype didn't work. Yeah. Were there any other major issues? No, there was no major issue. The, ah. the first one was uh, perfectly nice. I drilled the hole, did everything. Uh, but I think what I didn't factor in then was uh, the measurement be- between the neck and, and the bridge. Because okay. everything has to be a certain precision. So I, I think I missed it by just half an inch. And then I was playing the note, didn't sound good. I tuned it, didn't sound good. Um, then also the, the the electronics was not well, you know, put together. Uh, there was a little bit of distortion, you know, yeah. when you played. And again, it made my first time making a guitar, you yeah. know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, <laughs> you know. It's a big effort, but just taking yeah, the step to make yeah, it. Yeah, taking a step to make it. Uh, so, but then when I went back to the drawing board and we, uh, you know, finished the second prototype it sounded good it was the same original one i you know put some things you know apart and you know reset everything uh, then it sounded good nice. and i was very excited to wow. see africa sound uh, amazing mm-hmm. so that that was um the beginning of the whole aeg african electric guitar mm-hmm. and ultimately when the innovation was completed I said to myself, I can't keep this to myself. This has to be something every African can connect to. Yeah. So then I decided to sit down and look at capital cities mm-hmm. across Africa. So we, we hope, and I hope, that we can release electric guitar representing every country in Africa. Mm-hmm. So far we have nine. Okay. Which, which are these top uh, cities? So, so we have Addis Ababa, mm-hmm. we have Accra, mm-hmm. we have Soweto, mm-hmm. we have Nairobi, we have mm-hmm. Kinshasa, we have Kampala. Uh, we have uh, Accra, Ghana. Mm-hmm. Um, I have Cairo, Egypt, mm-hmm. and and I think the last one we have. Uh, you did just I said Lagos. At Lagos. <laughs> you forgot your hometown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lagos. Lagos is the last. That, that's where I was born. Mm-hmm. So when we f- do the design, it's pretty much wrapped up around the people, the culture, the color, the the flavor of. You know, different cities, you know, capital cities. Soweto is not a capital city, yeah. uh, but I just wanted to, you know, do the whole narrative of the Southwest Township, you know, of uh, the appetite story. So that's why we named that Soweto in South Africa. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so what prompted the decision for you to name it after Nairobi? Well, you know, there's so many things. Why Nairobi? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know when I when I look at the the books I've read when I was growing up about Kenya, I want to look at all the friends I've made over the years in college. Uh, when I was in um, when I lived in Tennessee, uh, one of my roommates, uh, Steven Guitar, a very funny guy. He was in pharmacy school then. It was a Kenyan guy, and we would you know talk about Kenya, talk about the food, yeah. and and also I've met a lot of Kenyans in my life, and I felt like you know Kenya would be. Uh, one of the first few, you know, countries, or you know, Nairobi would be one of the first few few cities that we would, you know, call it. And and also, Nairobi was very was the most intricate design out of all of our line of guitars right now. Wow! Because uh, when we designed the African shape, 
we have to divide the map into two, mm-hmm. divide the continent into two, then then find a neck mm-hmm. from the bottom to the top. Wow. Yeah, so all of our guitars are bolt on. When I mean bolt on, it means we use bolt to to link the neck to the body. Mm-hmm. But Nairobi is the only guitar that we don't have it on bolt on. Oh. It's completely wood from the bottom to the top, wow. and it's a solid, complete um, wood. And, you know, it gives you this combination of uh, a Stratocaster, Telecaster sound. For those who know guitar uh, terminology. They know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so Nairobi is unique. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. We are lucky to be named after a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Now, are you open to revamping African traditional instruments? Like let's say the kora in Kenya, we have the nyantiti, the string instruments. Yeah. But now no one outside can use them apart from the Kenyans who know how to use those string instruments. Are you open to revamping other? Well, it, it, I, I'm pretty much open uh, to anything. I will never say no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but also we have to look at the um, um, the, 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 the theory part of that instrument. Okay. I think one of the reasons why uh, most African instruments are not fully embraced is because the theoretical aspect of people learning. You know, I mean, I can pick up the guitar, the piano, because there's notes, there's yeah. things to read about it to make me learn. Mm-hmm. If we can write notes about that instrument, and the people can learn the theories, uh, um, the, a Japanese guy or Chinese guy, American guy can pick it up. Then also looking beyond just the instrument. I think the... Uh, electronic part of our instrument is not been realized yet. Uh-huh. Uh, being able to have some kind of uh, electronic system in that instrument, so you can plug it in, so mm-hmm. it can sound way louder. Yeah. yeah. So th- those are those are things we can look into, but also not just about the instrument alone, but converting instrument into you know um, innovative product mm-hmm. that can compete on the world stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, We have a next line of product, which I'm not going to tell you now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> which we're going to release, but it's, in, it's uh, in the line of instrument anyway. And we hope to release that very soon as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you play five instruments, yeah. as, as I read in your bio. <laughs> We, out of the five, will there be one that you'll make it an African electric something, let's say an African electric piano or... Well, I mean, we have too many electric pianos out there already. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Can we create something that would... Mm-hmm. Out mim- of the instruments you can play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the instrument, I can, I can play the piano, the drums, the guitar, you know, bass, acoustic, electric. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the more I play, the more I want to do something unique for Africa. Okay. Uh, I just don't... Because, you know, historical fact has traced music the origin of music to Africa. And if this is the origin of music, then we need to have something that speaks for us. Yes. You know, I mean, all the musical instruments we use here in Africa, you know, we buy maybe in, in China or in the United States, but can we have our own uh, factory here? Can we have our own instrument where we built here and can compete on the world stage? I think it's possible. Yeah. Anything is possible. Yeah. It's just taking time mm-hmm. to uh, strategize and see how we can make it happen. Uh, as an innovator, where do African innovators go wrong? Well, I, I think most people, uh, innovators, they have great ideas. Mm-hmm. I think um, the challenge is having the resources to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I've met quite a number of people who would like to build things you know, across the continent. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the manpower. Because mm-hmm. uh, when you look at the guitar, the instrument of Africa, I, I spend quite a lot of my out of pocket cost you know because wow. <laughs> yeah. i had i had a nine to five job to finance and to buy because to buy the wood to rent machine to cut the machine i mean it's it, it can it's, it's, it's expensive it's, yeah, it's very expensive yeah. so the research and development stage is where most people struggle mm-hmm. and i think if we have a platform where we can devote funding for research and development mm-hmm. and also having maybe a conference where we can bring innovators from you know, every part of Africa to, you know, bring up the ideas, sell the ideas and see if we can connect them to, you know, people who can invest in the ideas. You know, every idea is worth a trillion dollars. 
if you find the right you know investors mm -hmm. so i think people uh struggle and every idea may not come to fruition because the resources the financing and the opportunity is not there mm -hmm. um what i would say is uh anyone who is looking to be an innovator must first of all pen down your ideas mm -hmm. uh you can't just have a vision i mean the guitar that you see today i mean i i drew them when i was like nine years old i used to draw them in a piece of paper because it's what i i envision in my mind i mean other instrument i used to draw um uh, yeah, and some that i've drew i drew way back they become reality when you envision them within you and put them on a piece of paper then you look at ways to uh draw them uh you know cut them out make them happen and you know spend time with people who are better than you in thinking i mean just because you have an idea doesn't mean you have all the uh information or yeah. the resources to make it happen you know connect with people you know, uh, I, I met a guy who told me, you know, the guitar looks good, but you can do this and do that, you know, and just listen to different people can help your idea and shape it into becoming something um, real. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what I would encourage any innovator um, in, in Africa. And I think, I think Africa has a lot of people who can um, do great things. I met a guy in Egypt, I think 2019 or 18, it was from South Africa, I think from Zimbabwe, then lived in South Africa, I can't remember. He had this uh, software. I think he designed a software, and the software was for farmers who are farming, in, you know, the farming business. And the software will let you fly your drone to see what part of the ground is dry or that needs water. Wow, that's so, amazing. Yeah, and that software is some kind of infrared technology. Mm -hmm. So if your ground needs more water, it looks really red in the video so instead of having to just put it a lot of water you. yeah so yeah. it lets you see what part of the ground in your your uh, farm that needs water that's a big innovation that i've never heard of yeah. uh, that needs to be pushed i mean i think i still have his contact mm -hmm. uh so but but those are people that have great ideas who can champion the african innovation platform yeah you know in the nearest future yeah and actually change lives yeah change lives yes. you know yeah. create jobs and opportunities mm -hmm. Uh, you said earlier one of the major challenge was the technical aspect of the guitar. What other challenges have you faced? Uh, well, you know, the guitar business is, the, the guitar industry, let me say industry, uh, has been around for a long time. Yeah. And when you have top brand name like Gibson Fender uh, and you're just coming up with your own guitar, it looks like, you know, these guys are big. You're just starting off. Mm -hmm. um, the The reality for me is when we did initial design, it's to make sure that whatever we design can compete on the world stage. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty pretty much confident. So I have so much confidence in what we've designed. And the reason why mm -hmm. is because the time we spent, the research development, and just the feedback from guitarists. It, we placed wow. this in the hands of guitarists in the U.S., in Europe, uh, in Nigeria, in Ghana, all around the world, and uh, the feedback is so exhilarating. It's they just they just cannot believe the it's quality of the sound. Made. It's an African made. Uh, I gave one to the Oni of Ife, the king in Nigeria. I gave one to uh, King Sonia de uh, Ebenezer Bay, and they just cannot believe the quality of the sound that this this is bringing. You know, and that gives me a sense of satisfaction in what we've done and to know that our guitar can stand beside Gibson and Fender mm -hmm. and still sound good. very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's the joy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was there a time you almost gave up? And if there was, what what made you get up? Well I, I gave up. I'm not there's no there's no doubt about it. I mean this wow. yeah, I, I did give up at some point because when I did my first prototype between two thousand and seven and nine, even ten, I just the guitar was sitting in, in my room just gathering dust. The first prototype because I was frustrated because it cost me so much money to cut it out time and for for the final product to sound shady, it was it was frustrating. Yeah. And I just didn't feel the desire to go back to it. And and I, I spoke to a couple of people who said, this doesn't make sense. 
you know the guitar industry is is big you don't have to make more guitars and that was discouraging discouraging yeah yes yeah, so there was a time i went back to the to myself because i looked at the guitar one time in my room and i said so you're just going to design something for africa and just let it die so i i got up from my my weary state mm -hmm. and i said i need to see this come to reality mm -hmm. and those were the lowest moments mm -hmm. and 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 sometimes everything doesn't come uh all together at once yeah you have to you know take time to realize your mistakes and i'm not afraid to accept that you know my first prototype was was not really good uh but ultimately i was discouraged for a period of three four years oh that's long yeah i was yeah. then everything kicked back up around 2011 and by 2012 the whole thing was amazing mm -hmm. yeah so uh there was a moment of discouragement but it didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> it really didn't. Yeah. Uh, how can the African youths move from employment mentality into in an innovation mindset? Well, f first of all, I, I, I think everyone who wants to become an innovator must have, uh, they must first be a, a great thinker. You must think. I mean, I do a lot of thinking. At nights I don't sleep. I think a lot. Uh, sometimes I'm trying to shut down my brain when I'm sleeping. And uh, I can't shut down my brain because I, I do a lot of thinking. I think you must first be a great thinker. Uh, think about great ideas. And I think the best way you can be uh, more from um, an employment mindset into an innovative mindset is to look for problems and look to solve problems. Uh, every great idea is in this world and everyone you see who have become so great, they solve the problem. So look at if you look at your surroundings and you see a problem, it could be that that problem is existing for you to create a solution. And if you are able to create a solution, then your solution, if it's widely accepted, becomes uh, a blessing to you. And I think every innovation should not just be a blessing to the inventor or the innovator alone. It should, it should be something that will transform your world. Mm -hmm. And I've always viewed innovation as something, not just creating a product, but how to make this world a better place for you, environment, and future generations. Mm -hmm. So uh, how can young people move from that employment perspective? I, I think, first of all, is to know that you have a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, share your idea with people. You will not be encouraged all the time. People will discourage you. But also, uh, use your own resources to develop your first mm -hmm. prototype. And that's my own story. I spend time, money, resources to develop my, you know, initial prototype. And if you haven't created a prototype, you know, find ways to create it and start sharing your ideas with people. Uh, I would not say leave your job overnight because <laughs> you have to feed yourself and your family. Uh, but it'll take some time. And if your idea, your innovative solution becomes uh widely accepted then gradually you transition from employment into you know having something tangible you can you can um survive on yeah you know yeah. Mm -hmm. you have partnered with other african artists and correct me if i murder the names <laughs> so <laughs> we have oti ward yeah. from ghana yes we have femi Leye and paul tao yeah. of nigeria yeah. will there be a kenyan artist <laughs> <laughs> and I'm plugging in <laughs> Salty Souls Polycap the likes okay. that you like to partner with. Well, you know, uh, you know, as as a new company and we're starting off, um, you know, it would be nice to have, you know, ambassadors who represent Africa, mm -hmm. you know. And if we have to partner with people in Kenya, I think it's very possible. I would never say no. Mm -hmm. Um if he wants to lay, if Polycap wants to lay hand on our guitar, he's welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I love South so I have their playlist on my phone. Uh, I think they're great people, and uh, we're open. But we, we have to also factor in, you know, if if they can carry on the message, because this is not just about the, uh, you know, the innovation or the guitar, but someone who has a drive, people who have drive to push the African narrative. I, I have. I've seen the future. I'm not a prophet, mm -hmm. but I, I, I feel as though Africa will be taking over in terms of music mm -hmm. in, in, in less than 10 years from now. By 2030, I think African music 
is going to dominate the world. I mean, wow. there's, there's a shift in. Mm -hmm. I smell it, I feel it, I embrace it. And, and the message is to bring Africa to the forefront of the world stage that we have something to offer. Mm -hmm. And anyone who can push that message, push that narrative, uh, will be glad to, to, you know, to join them and they can, they can work with us, mm -hmm. um, you know, in our organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lastly, where can guys get the guitar in Kenya and approximately how much is it? Okay, so the, the guitar, we're partnering with a uh, couple of stores now and we're, we're working with them. I don't want to give out the names yet until we reach a final agreement on which, which one is going to carry the brand. But we're hoping by um, October 1st, the guitar will be available here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, and um, in terms of the price, they vary depending on what you get. Um, they range from about $999 uh, to about say two thousand dollars, and when you compare the pricing with the big top brands, you know you can get a, a Gibson for five thousand yeah. dollars. You can get Fenders for three thousand dollars, and our guitar is still within um, the margin where anyone can save up to own one. Mm -hmm. So because uh, you know as a new company, you just don't want to make your price too high. Mm -hmm. So, but if if you want to play good quality guitar, uh, you know. You know, this is one of the best thing you see there. The shape, the sound, the quality, the headstock, the 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 neck. I mean, you talk to average guitarists, they're so blown away by the neck, how this lets you play for a long time. And there are intricacies about the guitar that, you know, mm -hmm. your average guitars don't have. Mm -hmm. uh, we have something called a locking piece, okay. which, you know, it's a... Uh, it, uh, design that lets you lock your string in place when you tune. Mm -hmm. Most guitarists, when they play for 20 minutes, they have to tune their guitar all the time. Because uh -huh. once you play, you stretch the strings. But this, once you tune your guitar, you can lock it. Mm -hmm. and it will Until not after the concert. Until after when the concert is over. Wow. So those are part of the, the features we incorporated in the design, which makes it a unique piece of instrument. Mm -hmm. and, and also the identity it, it brings to the table so I mean, it's it's something we're looking to you know bring to Kenya very soon. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for gracing this podcast, and we hope you enjoy Kenya. Thank you. I'm I'm looking forward to try the local food here and uh, you know connect with people. Yeah. You know, but uh, it's such a great joy to be here. Uh, when we flew in yesterday, it was just really exciting to know that oh my God, Nairobi. Uh, this is. We're taking over Nairobi because we have a Nairobi uh, guitar here. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for watching the show. Please subscribe. I will see you guys on the next episode.